A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive, part 25, fitting the steam taps and pressure gauge, but not as you see here. In this episode, I also test fit a whistle valve. To my surprise, there was a serious problem with the globe valve that I was going to use as the turret steam isolator. I have a better idea for the steam isolation valve, and I will feature that in the next episode of the series. This is a small pot of Loctite 542 thread sealant. I use this stuff a lot and this one's nearly empty. I've selected the correct size of copper washer to make sure that the fitting ends up in the right place. I was lucky with this one. One washer was exactly right for the job. I applied the Loctite 542 and here I'm tightening it into place. It's very important to wipe away any surplus Loctite 542 because believe it or not, it's a very good paint remover. But the real reason for wiping away the surplus is just to make the joint look better. This tap is going to be used to operate the blower. The blower is a pipe that points up the chimney inside the smoke box. When you open this valve, steam rushes through the pipe and up the chimney and draws the fire. Why do you need a blower with a steam locomotive? It's usually used for the times when the engine is not running and the blast from the cylinders isn't drawing the fire and it also prevents blowback through the fire hole door, which can be very serious on the full size. I've removed the hair on the back of my hand many times from firebox blowback. If this is the blower valve, what's the other one for? Well, it's the injector steam valve. It allows steam from the boiler to go to the injector, which in turn pumps water into the boiler. The red cross means do not do this. Never fit a pressure gauge directly into a turret or into the top of the boiler. I know it looks okay, but it's going to get too hot on the top of the turret, and the high temperature will damage the internal workings of the gauge. The normal way to fit a pressure gauge is to use a loop of copper piping. I'll be making one later on in the video. The fitting supplied with this gauge is no good for the gauge itself, because it's too small. These larger pressure gauges have a guide for the pipe that's going to go in there. And I think the one on the pressure gauge is designed to sit in the end of a quarter inch pipe. This one's miles too small. I could drill out the end of this fitting, but then it would be very weak. The original gauge, which didn't work properly, had the fitting on the back. That's why I put this elbow where you see it, but now I have to move it. There are two holes with blanking plugs in them, at the other side of the turret, which was originally the side that took the taps. In this clip coming up, the camera's looking at the other side. I've removed one of the blanking plugs, and this is where I'm going to fit the elbow, and it needs to point downwards. You may be thinking, why is there a flat on the middle bit? That's because whoever made this turret didn't get the fitting exactly in the middle of the square bar. With my usual Barco spanner, I'm doing a test fit of the elbow, and it's not in the right position, it needs a shim washer. What I'm actually doing here is testing the fitting to see how strong it is, and it's very strong indeed. At first I thought that the siphon would be okay with the elbow in this position, but then I realised it wouldn't look too good. For the pressure gauge to be in the right position, I would have to have a loop with an S-bend in it. Here's a piece of quarter of an inch outside diameter copper tubing, and I'm going to use this to support the pressure gauge. What I did after this was I removed the elbow, put some shim washers in place, then I retightened it so it pointed downwards, and I didn't video this part. The top thread of the isolation valve broke off, and unfortunately I didn't video that part. Anyway, on with the job. Here's the broken globe valve, and you can see what's happened. The screw threads are silver soldered into the main body of the valve, and the joint wasn't strong enough, it failed, so this one's not going to be used. And here, using my trusty Barco spanner, I'm removing the broken valve, and you can clearly see the weak point on this part. All is not lost though, and in a way I'm quite pleased that this happened. I wouldn't have liked it to have happened in service, it's better that anything goes wrong in my workshop. Plus, if I'm honest, I didn't like the look of it. Now I need to remove the threaded part of the valve that's left in the turret. 
and to do that there are some specialist tools that every workshop should have. This is a very old set of Dorma screw extractors and they're all 100% perfect. All you have to do is open the pack and select the size that you need to go into the hole. Over the years I've used these many times and I've never broken one. Using these tools is simplicity itself. You insert one into the hole and then you need to rotate it to remove the thread that is stuck in the fitting. The best thing to use is a tap wrench. Here I'm using a backhoe spanner but this is not ideal because it puts pressure on one side only. Personally I find this to be the best way. Clamp the tool in the vise and rotate the part. In case you're wondering what that silver thing is behind the vise, it's called a light diffuser. Used for photography and video. Here's the broken globe valve. I'm not going to bother repairing it. I'll just put it in a box of broken fittings. You may think, why do that? Just throw it away, it's broken. But no, it may come in useful for another job, where it could be repurposed. I have four sets of small pipe benders, and the set that made this bend is the big set. It's the only one that I have that will create a loop. All the other smaller ones will still bend quarter inch pipe, but only at 90 degrees. Here's a siphon next to the pressure gauge. Before I silver solder the fittings, I have to make one of them. This is a whistle valve that I showed when I was unpacking the parts. This particular valve is designed to have a whistle screwed directly into the top of it, but that would be no good inside the cab of a steam locomotive. I'm going to fit a 3 8 by 32 threads per inch adapter so I can pipe it to the whistle which is mounted on the spectacle plate at the front of the cab. Over now to my trusty Boxford lathe to make a fitting to attach the pressure gauge to the pipe. I'm reducing the diameter of a piece of brass so it fits quite tightly inside the end of the pipe. Once I'd done that, I turned the part around in the chuck and parted off the excess that I didn't want. I'm using quite a thin parting tool. I don't want to put too much pressure on the part that I've just turned, which fits inside the quarter of an inch diameter pipe. Once I'd parted off the bit that I didn't want, I pulled what was left out of the chuck slightly and now I'm machining this that will fit inside the union nut. Nearly there, it's a bit tight. I'll just remove a tiny bit more so it fits inside the union nut. Here I'm cleaning up the edges with a file. First of all I centre drilled the end of the part, now I'm drilling all the way through with a 964 of an inch drill. Followed by machining a recess in the end using a 316 of an inch diameter end mill to accommodate the bit on the end of the pressure gauge fitting. Checking it was exactly in the right position, I then silver soldered the fitting that I've just made and the union nut to the pipe. And shortly afterwards, I even silver soldered the olive in place to stop the pipe from rotating. When I assemble the pressure gauge siphon, I've made it so the pressure gauge is in the centre. I just think it looks better that way. I haven't decided which way around to fit the whistle valve yet. The lever on the whistle can either be pulled by a piece of chain or I can make a wooden handle for it. It's a fact that most paints do not stick very well to brass and as you can see the whistle valve is already chipped and it's brand new. I'm going to remove the paint from the whistle valve and probably from the two taps. In the next episode I will show the fitting of a much better isolation valve. I've put the safety valves in the picture to remind me that I need to do some work on these too. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.